Oh, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, my name is Michael. I work for Rockspace. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to integrate uh, security into CI/CD pipeline. Before I start, I want to do a little survey. So, how many of you are working in security field? Great, we have lots of security guys. How many of, uh, of you are developers? That's great. How many are QE or quality? Do you all know CICD? How many know CICD? How many don't know CICD? <laughs> I say everybody knows CICD. That's great. Um, unfortunately, Jim will not make here today, so I will do the talk by myself today. Uh, I'm a manager for security engineering in Rockspace. I have been working in Rockspace for the past couple of years. I have been in the security field for more than 10 years. During this, uh, the past two years, uh, I have, and my team have spent a lot of time testing a lot of OpenStack projects, including the HATE, a neutral network, CDN network, uh, Solom, uh, and we found quite a few security defects. And, and at the same time, a lot of Rockspace teams, they starting to adapt the CICD process. So we have been working very hard to integrate security into the CICD process. So I would like to share our experience with you all. Before we start here, if you go to the keynote by Jonathan, you will remember Jonathan mentioned everything about the software. OpenStack is a platform that lets people run software. So we give this to our customers. Our customers run their software. During the process, our developer also creates software. And the, and the tester, we do test the software. And security engineer, we check the security of the software. Unlike a lot of traditional software security com uh, company, uh, Rockspace is doing things a little bit differently. Uh, in Rockspace, uh, security engineering belongs to quality engineer. In Rockspace, we strongly believe that uh, quality includes three things, function, performance, and security. That's the key payload of the quality. For your software to work, it must be functioned properly. If you send a post request, the results should be created correctly. It also should be able to perform, meet our SLA. So if we say we're going to create this uh, resource within two minutes, it should be happening in two minutes. And it should also be secure. So our security engineer has been working closely with our performance engineering and the quality engineer to make sure all software we have developed to give to our customer a test thoroughly. There is no, what, no security defects introduced during the process. If we want to test this software, we might need to know and we might need to follow how developers are creating software. So there are tons of ways for developers to create software. Here are the three main ways people create software. Uh, traditional waterfall methods, edge methods, and the CICD process. Let, let's take the, uh, a look at them one by one. So a lot of products are still created by using traditional waterfall. So traditional waterfall is a linear process. So you have step by step. First, you design, you came up with all the function requirements, and you, you began developing your software, and then the test, a UA test, function test, the security test, and then it delivered to the customer. The advantage of the traditional waterfall is you have to plan everything. You have to come up with detailed plans from day one to day 60. We do a, a fun, function requirements from day 60 to day 90. We do uh, development uh, blah, blah, and a lot of stuff like this. And another advantage of the traditional waterfall is before we start to develop software, we already defined the scope. This is what we're going to deliver to the customer. 
and we are working very hard to deal with it. And some people said, you know, because for waterfall, you need to think about the whole structure of the software. It might come with bad design because you have to think about every component, how they interact with each other. But one of the main problems of the traditional waterfall approach is it might take too long for people to develop software. And because there's a low interaction between the developer team and the customer. When the developer team finally develops the software, delivers the customer, oh no, that's not exactly what I want. So people came up with a project called Agile Process. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows how Agile Process work. The key benefit for the Agile Process is to increase interaction between the customer and the developer team so that the software can be delivered in a predictable uh, timeline. They run sprint. Normally, sprint are going to be two weeks or four weeks, and you came up with um, minimal requirements for these two weeks, and you deliver the software in two weeks. And after another two weeks, you deliver another feature. Based on the customer's feedback, you can always make a change. So the ability to change it is very important. That's what makes it different from a traditional waterfall. But the business is not satisfied with agile process. They want to develop their products even quicker. They want you know release a feature. If in today's world, if you can release a key feature today, one day be behind your competitors, you can gain a great advantage here. So people want, people came out the term of CICD. So for CICD process to work, people want to release their products, you know, multiple times each day. They want a small changes, small changes. So you, you can bundle a couple of small changes into bigger changes. But the problem with the bigger change is if there's something happens to, to the deployment, you, it's very difficult to troubleshooting. You know, by separating small changes, it's very easy to identify what the problem is. And so the benefits of the CICD is you have less defects and the quality of the products is improved. And since every commit to the repo always have a deliverable, so it means basically you can release whenever you are ready. Some of the team released, you know, multiple times each day. All those are good stuff. But this caused some problem for security team. So <laughs> generally our security team, security team has limited resources. We don't have enough people to test our uh, software. And I, we cannot test them quick enough. So we are trying to find, you know, better ways to improve and then at the same time, when we work with developer team, there's always struggle between the priority, right? For security, we always want our top priority is security, but the business wants the features. So they want the feature as fast as we can. So sometimes it's all, because developer is always busy with developer their software, it's a challenge to, to make both sides satisfied. And a lot of our, our testing, because we want a better test result, we have to do a lot of manual tests, especially for OpenStack, because it's API and it's, there's no automatic tools. So it might take a long time for us to test the software. So all those are problems, but if we take a, another approach, these are all the opportunity for us to improve. So in Rackspace, we have been working very hard trying to to take this opportunity to improve our process. We are trying to embed security in our CICD process. Here is a typical OpenStack project in Rackspace. And you can see here, it's, a, it's one typical CICD pipeline. So we have developers, they, whenever they commit the code to GitHub, the GitHub is going to trigger our build server, going to automatically build everything. Once the build succeed, we're going to run our test here. We're going to run our unity test, the function test, 
And here, we just try, we inject our security test here. So we have our source code security testing here. We also have our API dynamic testing here. If any of these tests fail, the system can automatically generate reports sent to the team, including security engineers, so we know that there's something wrong and some action should be taken care. And we treat security defects the same as function defects. So uh, the pipeline will not continue until the security defect is fixed. Once all the build is successful, it moves to next stage deployment. So in the deployment, once it's deployment to a predefined environment like the staging environment or pre-product environment, we're going to run all, all kinds of tests, the smoking test to check sure it's functional enough. And we are going to run performance tests. And this time, we are also run our security test to make sure everything we deployed into production is secure. If anything failed, there's always alerts sent back to the, uh, to the team, and the team are going to take action to correct them all. So Once we build the pipeline, we say, oh, cool, yeah, we did it. And we, there are quite a few benefits we saw immediately from here. One of the first benefits is for our test time. Um, before doing CICD process, we have some automatic tools like a burp and some other tools, but the whole process is still manual. It's very difficult to repeat. So, if one product was released to product to data center A, we repeat, we get together with the developer, ask all the documentation, and trying to make the function work, and then starting fuzzing, you know, based on different attack strings, check for SQL injection, check for uh, authentication authorization, check for uh, uh, trans transfer layer security, uh, and the other security tests. It might, because there are so many functions to test, we needed to test every function. We needed to test every parameter, including every HTTP header. It takes a while for us to do this. And then the developer said, oh, we make a small change, right? We, we add another new feature, and we release to another data center. It means we have to repeat the whole process again for another data center. So if we have five data centers, it means we have to repeat the whole effort to five data centers. So the test might take a long time, a couple of months, you know. It's really painful. With this CICD process, the first run takes some time because we need to cre create those automatic test scripts. That part, you know, there's no way to, to cheat here. But once we create all those automatic test scripts, the run is just, if you just type the command line, we have our uh, framework runner, it's just keep going, running all the test suites. Normally it takes a couple, couple hours and the test run. If you want me to test another data center, it's just a simple change of the configuring file. We point our endpoint to you know, London data center, it's just a couple hours we have our test results ready. The second uh, big advantage of this approach is we saw that our defect fix time is reduced from weeks to days. In old ways, we normally, after we finish our test, we generate this beautiful PDF reports you know, to meet the compliance requirements, and then we send the reports to the developer team. And the developer team put the into their backlog and started working on that. Once they finish the fixing, they send us alerts, an email, and we go there, check if, if it works. We close them in, in our defect system. Some of the times they are much in all, you know, more than iteration, so it takes a long time because it's based on the developer's priority, how much time they have. By using CICD approach, because the security defect is just like the function defects. It's a road blocker, so it forced the developer team must take action. 
we have a couple incidents that you know once we identify security defects, the defects were fixed in you know five or six minutes, and then they push that to uh, to staging environment, and we verified and close quickly. And for our security test, by creating automatic security testing, we can repeat our test, just like I mentioned before. You know, if we want to test different data center, it's just a simple configuratory change. And it's also audible because we have CICD process uh, built in here. So every run is, is saved in build server. So we can always come back to check. So uh, on Monday, we run this security test. On Tuesday, we, we run this security test all the time. So it leaves the audit trail for us. Whenever it comes to the PCI compliance, or any man came from, hey, did you guys test this product before? I said, yes, we did. Here are all the results. This issue we identified how fast they are fixed. And another big, big advantage of this approach is it generates a lot of metrics for us. So we, we can know, you know how many tests we run, how many issues we found, and we can build this over timeline, and we can tell the development team how th this type of defects appears, uh, for example, uh, SQL injection appears two times in the past year, and user input validation has been a consistent problem. So based on this metric, though, we can work with the development team on you know, possible training and improve our code uh, in the future. Of course, during this process, we all run into some, some challenge. And I mentioned before, the first time is always uh, time consuming because we need to spend the time to create all those automatic security test scripts. The good advantage for us is because we have been using our QE framework, so they, we save us some time instead of you know, playing the uh, application by ourselves, trying to figure out what's going on or read the documentation. We can just borrow their code. And they can, the development, developer or quality engineer, they can also help us create a security test case. They can help us speed some of this part, but it's gonna take some time if you want automation. And another challenge is different project is running it a different way. So different team running different pipeline. There's always some tweaks here. You know, KOE, uh, OpenStack running some KOE framework is different from Rockspace KOE framework. And we have to overcome all those hurdles. And the last and most important one is a, it takes some time for our security engineer to adjust this approach. CICD is a process, but most important, the mindset. You know, everybody should agree that we, this is something we need to do. Whenever the code change, all those stuff should be automated and we should follow the pipeline all the time. It's a little difficult for security engineer to adjust because we kind of got used to security consulting role. We test your products in the report, then it's all your, all your, all your problem. Fix it and come back. <laughs> let's, let's look about, you know, since we want to integrate the CICD process, how, how are we gonna really do it? So the key is automation. And we said this, the, the only reason why CICD can work is everything is automated here. For security, what should we automate? Generally, there are three types of security testing we talk about. The first one is static code analyzed. The second one is dynamic application test for OpenStack, um, most of the API security testing. And we also have infrastructure testing. Basically, it's just scanning the let work scanning the server to check for unless uh, they open the uh, ports to see whether you are running update software. Let, let's first look at static code analyze. For static code analyze, it's a process where you have access to the source code. So you get a copy of source code, you look through the source code to read through the logic or to check how data is processed step by step. 
which function is called, how, how does the code call database. And then you check for common secure vulnerability like SQL injection, improper use input validation, stuff like this. There are generally two ways to do it. One is manually review all of the code. A manual review of the code really can find a lot of good defects, but it takes a long time. The general rule of thumb is for a good uh, security engineer, they can review up to 200 or 300 lines per hour. If you think about OpenStack how solving the line of code, it might take a long time to review. So we definitely need help. So there are a couple of commercial products like Fortify, Wary Code, Wet Hat. They are specialized uh, automatic scanner. So those scanners can read your source code and based on their rules and the passing results, they're gonna give you a list of defects they found. But unfortunately, this does not work because so far all those commercial vendors, they don't support Python because Python is a dynamic language. It's very difficult to do data flow analyze based on that. We talk about with all those vendors, they keep telling us, oh, this is gonna be a new feature in next quarter. And so far it has not happened yet. So here come now here. So OpenStack security community, they saw th there is definitely a gap here. And they create a project called Bandit. And the Bandit, they, it's an automatic framework to scan your code for security defects. Ever since it exists, it has been used in, uh, on a lot of projects. Uh, Keystone uh, already invited into their CI process. And for for Rockspace, we already used uh, Bandit on a couple projects. Here is an example of the results reported by Bandit. So we run the Bandit on Solemn project. So, and you can see here, it definitely can give us some result back. Like it, it can tell you what's the severity and what's confident, how I confidential about these defects and which line of code might have security defects here. The first one is uh, about a sub-process without a, a sub-share. Basically, it's just trying to run some system command and the bandit saw it's a dangerous function and give you some warning. And the second one is giving a warning about using random, you know, random is used to generate some random number, but it's not a critical graph strong random generator. So it gives me warning that you should not use it for critical purpose. Just like all other automatic scanner, and you can see here, it might give you false positive because you cannot see if definitely in this case, say, okay, that's a security fax. Random is used, but is that used to encryption or decryption? Maybe not. So just like other tools, you need to dig a little bit further to make sure that they are not false positive. The good thing about the Bandit is they came up with a configuring file and you can include what type of check you want. For example, if your application does not use sequence auth, you can just you know, completely remove all the sequence injection check. And if you don't want to look at your test case, just, just look at the example here. You, you can use the ex exclude directory and, and test here. So that means that we are not check security facts for our test code. In some of the case, you always can find some new defects, right? Some new security defects, either by you know, manually code review or doing other approach. And the Bandit provides very flexible ways to write plugin. So you can easily add plugin to this framework. Here it just shows one of the plugin for shared injection. If you look at the code here, you can see how it works. So the key function here is call function name equals configuration sub-process. Basically, it, it tells the framework to check the function name. If they match something 
defined in the conversion file. And the second one is called check call argument value share equals true. So basically mean that it's check whether there's an argument called share equals true. If they found both, they're gonna return an issue. Say, that, oh, we identify the issue. You are using this dangerous function. And it has arguments share equals true. So you should not, this is security facts. In Rockspace, we have been running Bandit for a couple of projects. So whenever the code is checked into GitHub, it's gonna automatically kick off the Bandit. Bandit is gonna run it and send the reports to, to the team and also keep all the results on the, our build server. It gave us a, a, a baseline about how good it performances. And to this stage, we did not uh, did not fail the whole pipeline because, and, and, the, and we talked before, it might have some false positive here. But if, our, if we introduce one feature and our defects jump from 10 to 30, it, it definitely read the alarm here and the security engineer should jump in to take a close look at what has to be done. Next, we're gonna talk about the dynamic API testing. So basically, we need a working environment and we're gonna send the your request, test request, to check the response to identify all the security defects here. It would be great if we have a commercial products or other open source products that we can just automatically run this and it gives us a list of security facts. But unfortunately, so far, that it did not happen. So, and the first way I think about it, how about we creating our own framework and doing some tests. And after we talk with Sam, our Sam from Rockspace, uh, he quickly said no. And here come our hero because we work close our quality engineering. They already have their framework, which do automatic function tests. So we can definitely leverage what they have. So we can build a security plugin in their framework, which is specially do any security testing. And we can also review, reuse, reuse their code because they already test the products and make sure all the function called works. So there's no need for us to read the documentation, you know, send the request to see whether, uh, whether the JSON request in the documentation is correct or not. It took a long time, trust me. Because OpenStack documentation needs a lot of improvement sometimes. And we came up our volatility checklist. So here's the list of the check we're gonna run for all our products. And you can see here there's a common injection defects and the transient layer defects and the last one is application specific uh, attack. So it's kind of different from different projects to different projects. It's based on what does this action do? And then we can brainstorm some attacks, some tests we want to do. After that, after we came up with a checklist, we work with our quality engineering, got their source code, got their uh, model, got their client, and then we started creating all our security test case. Here is one example we created for our neutron network, neutron project. So this is for the authorization. The code is pretty straightforward. So we want to check, we create two clients. You know, one client creates one network, the other client creates another network. We want to check whether client one can access you know, another client's network. The second case is about whether one client can update the network from another client. So once we build all those automatic security test case and it, once it went through the same process and our QE is going through, they need to go through the uh, JIRA to review and be merged into the building machine, uh, merged into GitHub and all those, whenever the code new code is pushed to uh, GitHub, all our security test is gonna be run automatically. 
let's share you know, some of the security defects we identified here. So this defect was found for neutral network. So this is a post request that you send when you want to create a sub-network. So you, get, you, call, you send a post request. In the payload, you define what's your sub-network name, what's your network ID, and pay attention to there is a parameter called the DNS lim servers. So the proper value for this should be IP address or list IP address. But we found that, you know, if we send a long string of ones, and the server gonna give us a five zero three. And in addition to that, any further request to the server just return the same. And after working with the developer team and they tried to log into the server and found that they could not even run trace on the server. So basically this one request just kill the host API nodes. After digging around about the source code, it turned out that for this, uh, for this security facts, the code did try to do user input validation, but their user input validation is relying on regular expression. Their regular expression is so complex. That, that's the most complex regular expression I ever see. <laughs> so basically our tag string just killed the regular expression check. It just killed all the API nodes. So here is some lesson we learned by integrating our security testing into our CICD process. The first, you know, CICD process is become popular. More and more projects are adapting to CICD for better code and better quality. And this definitely provides the opportunity for security team to improve the traditional way of doing stuff. We should automate our security testing and we should improve our process. And the bandit is a very good tool and it has a very promising future. Uh, even though it has some, a lot, lot of features that are a lot av available in you know, commercial automatic scanner, but it looks good. You know, by working together, by contributing code to Bandit, we can definitely make Bandit a, a good tool for us to use in the future. The last one is about collaboration. So internally, we collaborate with our quality engineer, perfor uh, performance engineer development team. And more importantly, we need to uh, collaborate with the OpenStack community. We should, we're gonna uh, push our code to OpenStack and we want to uh, OpenStack to integrate our secure testing in the test suite for the future. So together we can make uh, OpenStack a, a better and a secure product. Thank you all. <laughs> if you have questions, please use the microphone here. All right, thank you. Uh, I have a question. So you just mentioned your team are using the, uh, your own QE framework. Uh, why are you not using the uh, upstream Tempest for the uh, unit and functional test? Uh, uh, I would defer some to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's open source. It's widely available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, also, yeah, do you have any plan to push out the uh, security testing test case upstream? Yeah, that's something w our team are currently working on. So okay. currently you we are working with the CDN team and the Solom team. Are you going to yeah. push it to the Tempest or another project in the uh, OpenStack? We are going to try to use Tempest for this one. Okay. Yeah, probably another folder on the Tempest that API and CLI and another security folder on the Tempest, right? Yeah, th they're always debating which one we should use, so. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. thank you. I'm trying to stay away from this war.
Hello. Uh, with your testing framework, uh, your REST API testing, it looked like a lot of it was modeled off of basic functional testing. I see the paradigm between security testing and functional testing uh -huh. radically different. So these tests that you write today, it looks like you're looking for a single input, a positive output, whereas security Anything can be considered good input. And then along with that, how do you uh, readjust your frameworks and your tests based off of new and emerging uh, security vulnerabilities, like uh, the switch right now from UTF-8 encoding attacks to UTF-16 encoding attacks? And how do you make sure you're ahead of the game when uh, those new uh, vulnerabilities come into play? So there are two questions here. The first one is, you know, you view uh, function tests are different from security tests, but in our view, they are same type of test, but forks are different. So QE have negative test. That's in some extent is a security test. So basically our test, we leverage the same framework. We send some attack string. So for example, for SQL injection, instead of valid, just like the example we show here, instead of IP address, we try different values to see whether we can crush the server or it returns back a different response. So that part we can work on. The second one for the new attack. So for new attack, the framework will not automatically do it. We have another suite that we use by ourselves, which is used by security. So basically, it's a fuzzing. So we find a lot of stuff, just like you know, Unicode or whatever, different encoding, we find all this stuff. But that gonna take a long time because we have a huge list of fuzzing streams from fuzzed on uh, all of the end uh, data points. So it will not be able to integrate with the CICD process because it might run two days or three days <laughs> on that. But once we identify something, for example, if we find a string all ones and we found we can kill the neutral network, we can build a test case in our test suite. So make sure in the future, this one will not cause a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rob Clark. I'm from HP. Um, firstly, I want to say thank you for doing this talk and rounding out the security track today. I think you did an excellent job. Thank you. Um, it's really encouraging to see uh, Rackspace and other big organizations pick up Bandit, which uh, we, we open sourced recently, and it's, it's really great to see it's in your CICD chain already. Um, my question is around, have you developed any extra plugins or enhancements for it, and will you be pushing them upstream? Uh, at this stage, we have not yet, but that, that's what we are have been trying to do. We will definitely want to get more involved with the bandit and trying to push you know, some of our security tests to, to the community. Cool. Well, you know, we, we have code sprints on bandit around about once or twice a year, and we'll uh, look forward to seeing Rackspace there. Cheers. Yeah, great. Hey, uh, so uh, my name is Tim Kelsey. I'm also from uh, HP. Um, Yep, really great talk. Uh, we actually have a talk about uh, Bandit specifically, so uh, later on this week that should be quite interesting. Uh, so I wanted to ask if any of the findings from the work you've done um, end up documented anywhere. The, the security project, um, which is the recent merger between the OpenStack security group and the, uh, the VMT group, the vulnerability management team. Okay. Uh, we have an initiative, well, a couple of initiatives, the OSSAs and the OSSNs, uh, where we try to document potential security issues and, and things that can be avoided with uh, configuration changes and things. I just wondered if any of this stuff that you've discovered through this testing process uh, gets fed back into that process at all. Uh, some of the defects were identified the way we log them through Launchpad and the sub uh -huh. defects and the winter through the process. But for some of the tests, we did not. It depends on which project we are working on. If the, if the code is, you know, from uh, belong to OpenStack community, we follow the process. If it's Rockspace customized, we did not. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you very much. Cool, thank you.